Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of Catholic Recon Testimonies from Reverts and Converts. I'm your host, Eddie Trask. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to comment. Don't forget to share videos. Keep the testimonies getting out there. This week's guest is Cassie Swan. Cassie, so good to see you again. I think we met about a month or two ago. At an That's right, at the Synod. At the Synod. And anyway, I think we immediately we had so much to share and it was it was actually awesome and in fact there was a couple I interviewed a few weeks ago that I also met at the Senate I don't know if you saw that but I saw that video yeah just sweet couple and in fact the, the people that were sitting at at my table it's just amazing what God does all their stories and reversions and conversions it was yeah. funny how we met because i was like you look familiar i think i've seen you around and i think we had passed in saint mark's a couple of times that's right probably and then finally just introduced ourselves yeah yeah well <laughs> again thank you for being on the show uh like i do with so many people you tell me where where would you like to start what's what's relevant to your story um the most relevant to my story story would be Mama Mary. Um, I was I was I'm a cradle Catholic. I was raised Catholic. We went to we went to mass every Sunday, um, and then I was 16 and just decided to listen to the secular world and really fall away from the church. Um, I I would do this thing with my mom where I would be getting ready to go to mass and I would take too long and then we would, we would miss it. And so then I moved out, um, and, uh, hadn't, hadn't been to any church. Um, I was in a pretty, pretty, um, not a, not a very good relationship for a while and, um, didn't see my mom, didn't see my family for a lot of the time. Um, I still, was able, still a teenager at this point or um no I guess I was no I was, I was 21 at that point okay um and I had you know fallen into all the all the worldly sins drinking and alcohol and parties and just not really finding self-worth in and what I had to offer the world um and Luckily, I know God inter intervened there with that relationship, didn't know it yet, but um, was able to get out and be with my mom. Um, and then 2018, 2017, I had started getting that pull to go back to church. Um, there's a Catholic church right around the corner from my home. And so I started, I started going on the, the big holidays, you know, Easter, Christmas, Ash Wednesday, <laughs> those types of things, and um, and was starting to learn about Catholicism and what what they really believed. Um, Matthew Kelly's book Rediscover Catholicism had come out of around that time, and so I had started started reading that and taking some of his advice, um, going to to mass every Sunday, maybe even trying a daily mass, um, and then 2020 hit and everything just was up in the air. I didn't know where to turn to. And so I called my mom and I said, I'm scared. I don't know. I don't know what to do. I don't, I don't feel like my life is going where it should. And now this has happened. And she said, she was like, it took everything I had to tell you this. Cause I was, she was nervous to say, she was like, have you prayed a rosary? Um, and I, I hadn't, I, I mean, I knew what the rosary was, but I didn't, I didn't know how to pray it. Um, so she gave me a podcast to listen to. And so every day at work, because I was the only one there and it was really slow with Corona and everything shut down, I would listen to this podcast and pray the rosary. I would, I would walk and pray. And if I just, I felt my, I felt mama Mary just hold me and hug me and just guide me along the way. Um, and then uh, the church opened back up and I started going to church and then the bulletin was adult confirmation classes that don't get offered very often. And I, I prayed and asked if this is what I should be doing. And then I went for it. And so I got, to, I was confirmed finally in May of 2020. And then that's, that's just, I have, I have to give it to mama Mary. She really just kind of 
she was gentle, but she really thumped me on the head and told me where I, where I could improve. So I want to make sure, let's go back a little bit and make sure I understand this. So you were going to mass and at some, at some points, even daily mass. And then when you said when Corona hit that you were basically saying that everything shut down, including the churches. And that's when you told your mom, I don't know where I stand. How did you feel up to that point when you were going to the mass? Did you feel like you were getting back to your roots in a sense? Did you feel like you were discovering something you had never felt before? Or was it still a little bit just no man's land? And um, I don't think my heart had been changed at that point. I was just kind of going through the motions. Um, I took it kind of like, like a class in school. This is what you do to get an A. And this is what you do to be Catholic. So, and I really was just that that book rediscover catholicism kind of laid it out um for you so i was just trying to go through the motions and feel something and i didn't my change of heart did not come until i started praying the rosary daily wow and do you remember a specific moment while praying the rosary was it just this gradual thing where you just started to feel love and and this i had so many people describe it as it's so hard to acknowledge it, um, that you are loved. And, yes. and that's what kind of drives people to realize, whoa, what, A, what have I done <laughs> in my yes. life to this point? Yes. How have I essentially run from this love? And B, um, how, what, what does my creator ask? What, what, is, what is our response to him? But go ahead. Yes. Um, I don't really, I felt like, I felt like I was getting signs, um, like pretty physical signs. Once I started praying the rosary, my, uh, my newsfeed and my Instagram started popping up with Catholics and Catholify just came out with an app and it was probably maybe two months after I started praying praying the daily rosary, they put out a call for leaders to um, do YouTube, um, pray the rosary live with them. And I was like, I called my mom. I was like, I feel like I should do this, but I also feel like I, I don't know how to, you know, I've only been praying the rosary two months. Like, I don't, I don't really know. I might have to have the prayers listed out. And, and she was like, if you feel called, you show them how you pray the rosary and go for it. So so I signed up and started praying the rosary and my time slot was very late in, in Boise time. So it was from 9, 9 p.m. to 10 p.m., okay. which was really cool because then I got people from India praying with me wow. and, and speaking with me and praying for their intentions. And, it, and then I just felt this community that I hadn't felt before, even though we still couldn't be together. Wow. And then that's what made me lead to learning about the saints and the communion of saints and really having them be my friends. That's amazing. And so you said adult confirmation class. How long was the class? Uh, I have to plead ignorance here. I always hear of RCIA. I didn't know that there's a separate thing. And, And considering your upbringing, did you you received your first Holy Communion and then you just didn't make it to confirmation at that point. You were taking forever to get ready. And yes, <laughs> I was, I was not interested in sitting yeah. there for an hour. I was, I was bored. I didn't, it didn't resonate with me um, at that point. So I, I was baptized um, as a baby. And then my first communion was at seven mm-hmm. um, at St. John's cathedral. And then I, I went to CCD and um, the youth groups every now and then, but by the time confirmation came, I, I it was not interested at all. Um, and no, nobody pushed me to, to, to do that. I think um, I was very, I was, I was not a humble individual. And so I, if any, if any criticism came or I would just, if I didn't like it, I would shut it down. So, 
um, maybe there was criticism or um, encouragement, but that I didn't receive it at that time. Um, and so I went, I, I graduated high school early um, and then I moved away and thought I could do it on my, on my own. Um, and it was, I mean, it was fine, but it was not fine. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. It's all fine to the egotist, egotistical, uh, yes. late teen. Yeah. Early twenties. We know it all. Everything's great. And if it's failing, you still tell yourself, this is great. This yes. is so right. Everyone mm-hmm. else is wrong. Yeah, exactly. Yep. And even though, you know, you're not happy, it, it's fine. You, uh, so I feel like the world tells you you're perfect the way you are and and you just get a you get a big head when you hear that and you don't think you have to improve and that's actually one of the things that I liked about Christ was that he wasn't he wasn't afraid to say you're not perfect but that's okay I love you and I I can help you follow me and it was just like no one, no one had ever said that. No one, no one cared enough about me to to say that that I had heard before. Well, that gets into the interesting narrative these days. It's it's a tale as old as time, basically. And that is, um, you think that true love is someone telling you that you're perfectly fine where you are. Yes. And that's not that's no. not love, nor will it ever be love. Love is being able not to criticize someone, break them down to where they're like, I'm miserable. Right, right yes. But it's certainly not a, I call it because I've dealt with it myself. I've been mm-hmm. that person many times. It's cowardice mm-hmm. that basically says, yo, yeah, you be you. Yep. So you could watch someone basically go off a cliff mm-hmm. and you're the, you're their friend. Yes. Rather than say that, I feel it. Even if you've not gone through that, we all have yeah. that in us. Like that is going to lead to destruction. And yes. it's on me. Even if that ruins the relationship, I've got to open my mouth and say, that's going to hurt you tremendously. Yes. And you may not care about what I'm saying, but I've just got to say that. So that, yeah. I, I know my mom had thinking back, I know my mom has, has said those things to me. Um, but I just was not receptive of her saying that. Yeah. And it was, there was just something about giving my knots, my, my worries and my struggle, my mess to mama Mary and saying, clean this up for me. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know where to go. I need help to straighten to straighten these beads out and then i come to find out there's an undoer of knots undoer of knots novena oh absolutely absolutely so uh what was i asking about the the confirmation class what Mm -hmm. what was that like for you and how long uh did that take so that was actually a really great experience i did it at saint mark's um adult confirmation are for adults who have been baptized um but have not been confirmed Yes. Um, where RCIA, you're not, you haven't been baptized and or confirmed. But I thought so, you had the cat- catechumens and candidates. So in some instances. Yeah, they do get baptized and then they continue with RCIA. Um, but what I had, I had learned a little bit about the Catholic Church where RCIA was more of a basic level. Sure. That makes so sense. adult confirmation was a really deep exploration of Catholicism at that point. Got it. And it was wonderful. Um, I was supposed to do it with a couple other people and it ended up just being me and the teacher. And we got to, we got to just really deep dive into what we believe and, or the Catholic Catholics believe and, and what I believe and what I've been through. And it was very personal and it, it was a beautiful experience. That's amazing. Now, what did you have objections at that point or did you just say I, I by faith I I accept this and it it feels so right it, was that more of your experience yeah I I really I really didn't have any objections um I there wasn't anything that had come up for me um 
that made me not want to be Catholic or, or question the Catholicism. Um, I had people tell me, you know, Catholics are looked down on, you know, you're going to, you're going to be looked down on. And I just, I was like, I don't, I don't have any of those qualms and it doesn't bother me. I, I love, I love how deep you can go with Catholicism or as surface level as you can go, go with it. Um, and it was, you got the early church fathers that you can learn from and read on. And so I was, I was listening and reading some very intelligent men and women. And I, I said, if, if these smart thinkers can follow Catholicism, I can too. Wow. And I, I just never had any, any, any setbacks from it. That's incredible. Now, what about the experience of coming into the church and what has that been like since coming into the church and have you dealt with any opposition and how do you kind of deal with that? Yes. So I, I was so on fire going into confirmation and just, I could feel the Holy Spirit working with me daily. And as soon as I got confirmed, I had this, I don't want to say a dark night of the soul, but I, it was where I just kind of lost everything. I it wasn't on fire. I, I didn't know why I had been confirmed. I had, I felt like the enemy was attacking me, um, on very, um, personal things, um, past issues, um, like accusing you or something. Yes. Yeah. Being like accusatory or, you know, it, it felt like they were like he was picking apart what I what I believed in. Like, why would you believe that? That's obviously not true. And so I really, I was really sad right after I I was confirmed. It was a it was very dark, and um, I just decided to keep reading and keep praying, even if I didn't feel anything. Um, I I just kept saying the words and and keep I kept filling my house with holy water and just really trying to read the word and keep reminding myself of who who our god was and how unchanging he is and he's he's helped other individuals go through that too yeah it does help to read about different saints and their experiences with dark night yes. of the senses and mm -hmm. pur purgation and all that uh what was i going to ask you about how long did the period last would you say do you remember um i would say it lasted it lasted for about three months and i finally i finally went to the i want to answer that call <laughs> no, i'm actually gonna put that off i'm sorry it's all good uh, okay. do not disturb <laughs> I, so, um, two months, two months of that, of that really hard time, just going through the motions, um, making sure I went to mass, um, that I finally went to confession and the, the, the priest was just wonderful. And he, he gave me this analogy about, um, God being a clay maker and how the clay spins, but doesn't do anything. It's really the the creator that makes the changes and one little bump changes you. So the next time you go around, you're not the same person. And I just was like, I, I, I was crying because I, I knew he was still working, even if I couldn't see it daily. And so it, it, it widened my view of, of my, my life and time and space. Like if you're not just one day, you're, you were made for eternity. Oh and, man, that is so good. That is yes. really, really, really good. And the fact that you persevere through it, that's how you get closer to God and not to get too deep into it, but I'm learning about, like I was mentioning the dark night of the senses and dark night of the soul where the person in that fur in justification, when you come to the Lord and you've renounced the world, well, there's this phase where 
you don't, you have this aridity, you don't have God, you don't feel God. Mm -hmm. And what's so fascinating is you're learning how to love him purely because he is God, not because mm -hmm. of what he's giving you. Yes. And that, I just, that hit me in a completely different way. It's like, <laughs> wow. You know, and when you just mentioned that, I think of, of that, you're, you know, learning to cling to him. He yes. loves you dearly. Mm -hmm. And yet we're always running after other things. And in that process, you end up realizing you're looking in on yourself. You're obsessed with yourself. And he's trying to say, come on, come on. You know, I had a really hard time with humility. I, I really did. And to, to go through that, like you said, made me dependent on him not not on myself I couldn't I couldn't fix it there was nothing I could do yeah. to to fix it I had to rely on him and I had to keep going back to his word exactly well a plus good job that's amazing thank you <laughs> uh what else what else has happened since then uh what else do you think would be I guess interesting to those so many people want to know like what is it like on the other side? Because there are so many people that fear, and I know you're a revert, but so many that are on the verge of conversion, they just go down these different tangents and they're just, how can this be so? How can this be so? And is there anything related to that that, that you can think of? I think the most, but I, I think we're in a great time for learning and um, especially for Catholicism, there's so many podcasts or Instagram pages. Um, Formed has a, a TV, uh, like it's kind of like a Netflix of Catholicism. Um, and so I really relied on, on that because a lot of my friends, my family was Catholic, but a lot of my friends were not. And they I didn't have anybody to turn to besides besides these podcasts, these these priests that I was that I was trying to get involved with. Um, and so I think I think filling your day instead of watching a Netflix show, maybe watch a formed show and just making those little tweaks. I think that really was what um, kept me going in on fire because these teachers, they're on fire too. And the more you learn, you're just like wow this 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 is amazing it, I've, I've opened my eyes to to what this really means I think that's why I didn't have a problem with Catholicism because it wasn't it wasn't Bible alone and I did I needed I needed somebody else's voice besides mine I needed to hear I needed to I needed to hear I needed to have rules I I don't think I had any rules before it was just whatever I felt like doing. And it was exhausting. <laughs> it was exhausting. So I, I think that's why I, I was okay with the Catholic church was because the church has the authority and reading about um, the early church fathers and why they have the authority and how far back it goes. Um, I think that was, I think that was very um, pivotal for me. Well, yeah, and I think what you just described is also the opposite of what a lot of people deal with. They would say that they were so, they were fine living in this relativistic lifestyle, right? Yeah. So when they hear rules, they're saying, oh, okay, that's oppressive. I'm out of here. But in fact, did they explore what that was? Or was it just this, I need to keep, I need to grab this thing that I call my freedom Yes. And I'm just going to call that oppressive, even though deep down inside, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, that's my theory. I don't know if the catechism teaches on this, but <laughs> you can see the freedom Yes, when you're not caught up in sin. And yet you have to refer to it as oppressive and yes, potentially tyrannical. Who, who knows, you know, your, yes. your brain will do whatever it has to do when it's in flight and it's freaking out. And yes. Yeah. Uh, it, I think, I think the sins are so tangible. You can, you can feel them, hold them. You, your body or your brain tells you, you feel better when you, when you commit a sin. 
Um, and when you turn, you turn to the Lord, he's quiet and he sometimes isn't tangible. He, some, sometimes you can't, you can't feel him or you can't, you can't feel the effects right away. And, and it's so our savior, Jesus Christ went through suffering and he didn't, he didn't turn away. He, he didn't turn to, to drugs and alcohol to numb his feelings and to numb his, his pain. He went through it. His mother stood by him and went through it too. And, and didn't numb, didn't numb to the world and also didn't become a hermit and exclude themselves from the world. They open themselves up to be hurt again and again and again. And I felt so comforted in knowing that it's okay. It's okay to hurt. It's okay to have, to, to have pain, even if it was self-inflicted and it's okay to go through it and meet, meet on the other side. That is so well said. That is really cool. Yeah. The, the issue of suffering and then realizing how he, how he can use that so well and turn it into a good, not to say, oh, that good is you will never suffer. No, not at all. Maybe you learned how to suffer in joy, Mm -hmm. like St. Therese, right? And that's the part of, I mean, at the core of Catholicism, until you live it, it, I don't know, it's really hard to explain, especially if someone doesn't know Christianity and they just Mm -hmm. hear of Jesus they say okay this is what Jesus fully God fully man this is what he went through for us what does that mean for me what is this right people are talking about suffering joyfully what what you know yeah when I first when I first went to Catholicism I was so nervous I was going to be a martyr. I'm like, I'm not ready to be a martyr. Like, I don't, I don't think I could do that. And, and I ended up going to the women's conference last year and Sister Mary Eucharista was there and her talk was on martyrism. And she said, he's not going to make you a martyr if you're not ready. He, you, need, you can use fortitude. And he will grow you in fortitude. And if, and if you need to be a martyr, he will, he will make you a martyr. And I was like, okay, I can, I can rely on him and, and not worry about being a martyr. <laughs> I can yeah. just rely on him and, and have him leave me. <laughs> so, but I was very nervous at first. <laughs> oh man. I wanted to also, you, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, Cause you hear about St. Peter, you know, the first Bishop, he was martyred. The 12 apostles were martyred except for john and Mm -hmm. you're like oh man if i follow this guy i could be the world is not going to like me and he even says that you know they don't like you because you're not you're not them you're not of the world and what he teaches us among countless other things is Mm -hmm. you know when he's being led to the slaughter you know like a sheep before it's shearers yeah. he didn't open his mouth. So mm-hmm. it's one thing to say, I'm going to endure. And it's another thing to endure silently and be able to take that to your Lord. Yeah. And that that's another element that's so uh, amazing, <laughs> fascinating, just mind boggling, you know, where you just can always look to him. What did he do? And it's not just the wristband. What would Jesus do? It no. is meditating on his words and meditating on all these different scenes and realizing quiet you're not talking about your trials if you do talk about your trials Mm -hmm. it's not this complaint it's you are sharing something maybe it's going to benefit someone but you're just you know what i mean and Mm -hmm. only through grace can that happen so i think i think too um if you're, if you're away from the church, I think you want people to know, I struggled so hard to get here and you want that validation. Sure. Um, and then when you turn to him, you don't, it's like, you don't need that validation. He knows, and 
you're okay. You're okay with that. If somebody asks you, you can tell them honestly, but it's not like you're looking. Well, yeah. personally, I was looking for, Hey, I went through this. Aren't you proud of me? I went, I went through this and, um, I didn't, I didn't find the need to have to do that anymore. I, I used to have a face full of piercings too. And just when I started reading the word, the first thing that came out was my tongue ring. And I just, I thought I would always have my, my tongue ring until I was 80. I, it was like a, until you were that 80? I would have. Yeah. I, I thought I would. And it was when I started reading, reading the word, it's like, I, I just felt this pull to take it out. Like I was like, it was preventing me from him using my mouth. Wow. And it was just, and so little by little I changed. I don't even look like the person I was before. That's amazing. What you said about validation is so true. I, you, you often wonder why, why am I sharing this? And that's what examination of conscience is so great for, you know, why, yeah. what was my core motive for sharing that? Is it to mm -hmm. help someone? Right. Is it to make myself look good? And we all mm -hmm. have to go through that and, and realize okay, yes. there is a time, there is a time. And uh, mm -hmm. once your motives are kind of worked out with God's grace, then Right. You feel much more secure going out there and, and sharing. So yes. um, last question I want to ask you about is community. It felt mm -hmm. like, you know, may, if I understood you correctly, the yeah. first 25, 20, whatever, 20 years of your life, there might not have been a, an incredible community. How has that been for you in church? It seemed like when we got together at that event that there, that's not even your parish though, is it? No. Mm -mm. Okay. Well, you're so sociable. So anyway, go ahead. I, I pushed myself to introduce myself to people, um, and smile at people when I was, when I was in, in church, I was looking for a community and, um, really, really push myself to find events or classes, um, to put myself out there. I joined the Legion of Mary at St. Mark's um, and was able to get involved with, with the church that way. Um, and now I have this, I have this wonderful community around me that is always praying for me and always wants the best for me. And I just, it was never, it was so scary to approach somebody too. Cause you're like, I'm, I'm a sinner. They, you know, I, am I going to be able to relate with these people? And Yes, that's that's one of the best things about Catholicism is we're not afraid to say we're we're sinners. We're not afraid to go say sorry. Yeah. Um and and be reconciled, not just not just forgiven, but reconciled with the community and with God. Excellent. So I, I really pushed myself to to find the classes. And even if I didn't speak in them, I just I just decided to just show up. Just keep showing up. Just keep trying. Um, actually, and that's, I think that was in the gospel reading today was St. Peter saying, just keep trying, just keep going. Even if it's hard, we've all dealt with it. Your brothers and sisters are dealing with it too. Just keep going. Yep. And that's, and that's like you said earlier, the, the virtue of fortitude. Yes. Also there's based on your, what I'm hearing from you, there's a lot of courage involved mm -hmm. in that lot of courage so i commend you for that and also related to people praying for you you now have an additional community people yes. that watch this program can can also pray for you and your intentions and um anyway i appreciate I wanna, that yeah i just want to thank you for sharing all of that and i'm glad that we made this work and if there's yes. anything do you want to add anything else for for part you know a parting party um, i am um... I am um, trying to get my marriage baptized or blessed in the church. So if you can pray for me and my spouse for that, I would, um, then I would be in full communion with the, with the church and it would, it would just be wonderful. So okay. um, uh, I, I just want to leave people or with you um, that it's okay to be unsure and it's okay to not feel worthy, um, but he thinks you're worthy. And so you just have to show up and he'll do the rest. Awesome. Thank you, Cassie.
Thank you, Eddie. God bless you. Everyone, thank you for watching. Until next time, take care and God bless. Bye-bye.